أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الذي جعل لكم الأرض ذلولا فامشوا في مناكبها وكلوا من رزقه وإليه النشور أأمنتم من في السماء أن يخصف بكم الأرض فإذا هي تمور أم أمنتم من في السماء أن يرسل عليكم حاصبا فستعلمون كيف نذير ولقد كذب الذين من قبلهم فكيف كان نكير صدق الله العظيم In the previous ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his oneness, his greatness, and the importance of believing in him. In this ayah of Surah Al-Mulk, ayah number 15, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us some of the great signs of his existence, signs of his greatness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ ذَلُولًا He is the one who made the earth submissive to you people. Many different translators have translated this word dhalul in different ways because of the lack of proper wording in this language or in different words we might say because of the difficulty of translating the Arabic words into any other language whichever language that might be, and especially the English language. But the word dhalul means a person who totally submits himself to someone, anyone who would totally give up all of his requirements, all of his needs, and just submit that, that person will submit himself to someone else, that person is the Lul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He made the earth submissive to you people. And so submissive that, فَمْشُوا fi مَنَا kibiha. You walk, منكب is the shoulder. You walk on the shoulders of the land. Normally when you ride an animal, no matter how humble and submissive that animal will, be, will become, you know the, where your limits are and where to write. You are not going to try to sit on that animal's head. You won't try to sit on that animal's shoulders. You will sit on that animal's back. Animal being very humble and submissive means gives you easy access to ride his back. But there is no animal, and normally the animals don't like anyone riding on their shoulders. They get upset. They don't like it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The earth is so submissive to us that فَمْشُوا fi manakibiha, That you walk on the shoulders of the land, which means it's totally submissive. Has submitted itself totally to you people, that you do whatever you want with it. It says nothing to you. Fulfill all of your requirements. Just think about it. When normally we think of making something very strong. Something that won't start shaking up. We will think of using a lot of metal. We will think using a lot of concrete. So we try to use all of this hard material when we would like to make something very strong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make the whole universe 
And of course, he wanted to make it strong enough that it will carry all the human beings that will come into this world. And he knew that we will be building these lofty buildings and huge constructions and such heavy materials on this land, on this earth. Still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used this dust to make the earth with. And here we can see the difference. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have made this world out of metal, it will get extreme hot. It will be almost impossible for people to walk on it barefoot. In winter, it will, you won't be able to touch it. As soon as you, you touch the ground, you will get stuck to it. Because in that extreme temperature, if you hold, if you touch a metal, your eye, your hands, or whatever you touch with will get freeze. So he did not want to make it of that kind. If it was something like gold and silver and things that people would use all the time, then people will be stealing each other's land. And they will try to make, break other people's land and take it away. And a person who has a lot of yard, he might every day be missing some part of his yard because people would like to steal some of that, that land from him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make it of any of those materials. He wanted to make it and he made it such. If we were to think of making it in this way, subhanallah, there will be no way they will, that we can make it that way. That is strong enough that it can carry all the burden you can put on it. Think of putting any burden on it and it will carry it. And soft enough that a small plant comes out of the ground and breaks the ground. Subhanallah. The same ground that's carrying thousands and millions of pounds of buildings. Just beside that building, you will see small grass coming out. <coughs> the same land that's holding these lofty buildings the small, this, these plants and this grass is able to break the ground and come out of it. This shows جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ ذَلُولَ This is how submissive the earth is to us. That when we wanted to bring the plants out, it brings the plants out. This is how soft it gets. And we want, when we want this land to hold these huge buildings, it holds the whole huge buildings. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of this great blessing of his. فَمْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا Walk on the shoulders of this land. وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِهِ And you will get a lot of sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming out of this land. So eat of that. وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورِ Eat of the provision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورِ And all of us will be resurrected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The resurrection will be back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, after mentioning this important fact of how submissive the earth is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us something else now in the next ayah. I did not touch that part in this ayah intentionally because this ayah is a very important topic about when we talk about how submissive the earth is to us. There is a point that we normally miss it. And normally we never even think about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us in this ayah of Surah Al-Mulk. Think about it. When a person gets tired, enemies are surrounding him from all around. The person is totally depressed. Has no way to escape from his enemies. Tried his best to run away from them. Did all of his planning to protect himself against his enemies. Finally, he gets tired, sits down or lays down. Imagine if this earth will become our enemy. If the earth will become the enemy of the person, then where the person is going to go? And if the skies will become the enemy of the person, then where... Where is it that we can escape from these two things? 
There is no way that human being can escape from these two things, the earth and the skies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَأَمِنْتُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ أَنْ يَخْصِفَ بِكُمُ الْأَرْضِ Are you certain that the one who is in the heaven will not, uh, the one who is on the heaven is not going to make the earth swallow you up? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember, with all of that the use that you're making of this earth, this earth can turn into a punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This earth can become your enemy and what can become the reason for your destruction. And a person who can run away from every enemy in the world finally lays down on the ground, that person will not be able to lay down on the ground if he is not certain that this is a safe place for me. We all know that ground is a safe place for us. We walk on it very peacefully. We sleep very peacefully. If a person will know that there is a rat under his bed, I'm sure won't be able to sleep for the whole night. Just a, a rat will not will pro, will uh, not allow us to sleep for the whole night. Imagine if the person knows that this earth can swallow, swallow me any time. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Do you think this earth can do cannot do that? Aamintum man fi sama? Do you think the one who's in the heaven?" has no power to make the earth swallow you up. فَإِذَا هِيَ تَمُورُ It will start shaking and swallowing you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an, ex uh, an example of this in Quran al-Kareem of Qarun. فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ فَمَا كَانَ لَهُ مِنْ فِئَةٍ يَنْصُرُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُنْتَصِرِينَ We made the earth swallow him and all of his castle he had no one to help him and he could not even help himself. Are you people certain and you have no fear that the one who is in the heaven can make the earth swallow you up? Or you people are certain that he is not going to shower stones on you people from the heaven. The punishment can come from it can come from either way. قل هو القادر على أن يبعث عليكم عذابا من فوقكم أو من تحت أرجلكم. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, He has the power to send the punishment from above you, or to get the punishment to you from underneath you. The punishment can come from the heaven, or it can come from the from underneath from the earth. And these are the two enemies. If these two things will turn to be the enemies of a human being, human beings has no way to escape from these two enemies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given you control over this land. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not using these skies to be against you. Otherwise, if he wants, he can send the punishment from above us and there will be no way for us to escape from that punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just think sometime a heavy wind, sometime a storm is enough to scare us and make us do a lot of istighfar and salah and dua and recitation of Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that these are the things, some of the things, rain, wind, Birds, these are some of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used for destroying the previous, some of the previous nations. Ashab al-Fil were destroyed by birds. People of Nuh by water, raining, by the storm. Qawm al-Thamud, Ad, and those nations by a wind. So these are the things that are always around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make these things turn against us and then the person will not have peace of mind anywhere in the world. <laughs> Soon you will know how is my warning. Don't think that this is just a word. <laughs> Soon you will know you will see my warnings 
that how it comes, how it turns out to be true, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in one of his ahadith that before the day of judgment, a time will come then when large number of this ummah will be swallowed by the earth, by the ground. Night time, all of them will be there. In one of the ahadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes in further detail to explain that there will be groups of my, of my ummah who will indulge in drinking music and all type of sins at night time in the morning there will be many of them they will be swallowed by the earth and many of those people will turn into the shape of monkeys and swines so these are the punishments that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said will take place before the day of judgment and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of the same fact that God forbid we get into those things and instead doing things that will get us in that punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa al billah. And this is the main reason of these ayahs and the lesson of these ayahs that refrain from doing, doing such acts that will make you get into the situation of getting swallowed by the earth or turning, in, turning into those monkeys or apps. Wa ilayhi nushur فَسَتَعَلَمُونَ كَيْفَ نَذِيرُ وَلَقَدْ كَذَّبَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the people before you rejected. They rejected the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَكَيْفَ كَانَ نَكِيرُ So see how was my punishment to those people. Get a lesson from those people. So it's already there. The lesson has been set up for this ummah. That nations prior to this ummah were destroyed with all of these things. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى الطَّيْرِ فَوْقَهُمْ صَافَاتٍ وَيَقْبِضٍ do they not see the birds above them who are spreading their wings and they at the same time they close their wings? Who's holding them other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And these same birds can really bring the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look at these birds. They're flying above you. Get a lesson from these birds. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's holding these birds in the skies, who's holding these birds in the air, He is the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's making you live in this ground, on the earth. Just as you can think you cannot fly up in the air, the same way don't think you with your own power is able to walk on the ground. He made the earth submissive to you, otherwise any time he can change that situation and then you won't be able to walk either. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the hadith that a time will come when this earth will be against the person. And that is the day, of, uh, the, day the person will die. For those sinners who have disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, as soon as the person is buried and that person is sinner, as the angels will go to that person and ask him the questions, the earth will start squeezing the person up and will say, I was waiting for you to die for a long time. I was waiting for you to die for a long time. Because you were one of the worst sinners that was walking on me. And I did not want you to walk on me. Because you continued walking on me with all of those sins. And I did not want to carry you with all of your sins. Therefore, today I'll show you how I deal with you. مَا يُمْسِكُهُنَّ إِلَّا الرَّحْمَانِ إِنَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ بَصِيرٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He's watching everything, He sees everything, He's well aware of everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these ayahs is reminding us that even the little peace of mind that we have, and in fact, a great peace of mind in this regard that we have, that we know that I can go home and have rest. I can sleep peacefully. I can have rest peacefully. Imagine if ours, the ceiling of the house is dripping, just dripping water. We will be running here and there and trying to find a way how can we haul this water from dripping into the house. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, imagine if the stones are showering at you from the heaven, from the skies. Instead of rain, the stones will start showering at you people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send those stones as a punishment to you. أَمْ أَمِنْتُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ أَنْ يُرْسِلَ عَلَيْكُمْ حَاصِبًا 
Do you think that he cannot send the stones? The nation of Lut, this is one of the ways that uh, one of the punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta sent on those people that the stones, they were, they were stoned from the heaven. So these are different punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the hadith when a person is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything in the, in the universe becomes obedient to this person. I don't want to make the subject too long but it reminds me of Ibrahim bin Adham rahmatullahi alayhi. Well known person in the history of Islam because he was a king who left his kingdom. It's something that's got it in all the histories that a king who left his kingdom and the reason that he left his kingdom was he was a very virtuous king, very God-fearing person. Always seeking ways to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trying to do his best to obey and do the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he left his kingdom. He was, out, he was out in the jungle and people went to look for him and they finally found him somewhere in the jungle sitting by one of the rivers. And he was sewing his own clothes with, with his hands. So they said to him, why don't you come back, take the kingdom, kingdom back. Still we, won't like, we would like you to be our king. That place is still for you. Come and take it back. See here you have to do the work by yourself, there people will do all of this work for you. He said, what, type, what kingdom are you people are trying to give me? What type of kingdom do people think that I have left and I have lost? I have not lost anything in my life. And then he threw the needle in the river or ocean, whatever it was. Then he said, I need my needle back. This is all he said. I need my needle back. And hundreds of fish came out and they are holding a needle in their mouth. Each fish is holding a needle in the mouth, trying to give Ibrahim bin Adam rahmatullahi alayhi that needle. He said, I don't want none of these. I don't want your needle. I need my own, the one that, that I have just thrown in the ocean. And a big fish came, all of these fish went down and one fish, big fish came out with one needle in its mouth and Ibrahim bin Adam rahmatullahi alayhi took that needle and he said to these people that now you people, still do people think that I have lost something? This is my kingdom. Because when Allah subhanahu man kana lillahi kana allahu lahu, this is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that whoever becomes totally for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kana allahu lahu, Allah become his. So then, once the person gets the real servant of the king of the kings, of the greatest king of Rabbul Alameen, nowadays we see a person who might walk, work in the White House is so proud that I work over there. And here a person who becomes the real servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and really knows the value of serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that person realizes that now I have the kingdom, the kingdom of the whole universe. When, if you look in Quran al-Kareem and Pharaoh, invited all the magicians to compete with Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. They asked him, Oh Pharaoh, Fir'aun, what is it that we are going to get if we won? So he replied, you will become close to me. I'll keep you in my castle then. Then you will be closest to some of the one of the closest people to me. So that to him and to them, this was the greatest gift they can achieve, they can get. That be close to Pharaoh. Muqarrabin is not saying I will give you so much of gold and silver. Because once you are Muqarrab to that king, then you are getting all of these things. Then you don't worry about none of these things. Whenever you need something, you go and tell him that I'm having a difficulty today, I need this. So if a person is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become muqarrab to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then imagine what type of kingdom this person has. This is why one of the scholars said that if kings will know what type of kingdom we have in our hearts, 
they would try to come with their swords to fight us to get this kingdom from us. Because they will realize that the real kingdom that people, anyone can have in this world is our kingdom that we have and we carry in our hearts. So this is the real kingdom. The person establishing the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as soon as we turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then everything in this universe turns away from us. And everything in this universe instead going away from, instead using all of its abilities against the human beings. And human being starts becoming the servant of all of these things. Think about it. When people are worshipping stones, people are worshipping stars, people are worshipping idols. What is this? This is just because turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as these people turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they became the servants of stones, servants of plastic, servants of metal. And today we see ourselves also being the servants of these plastic, metal and dust, wood, trees, get two by fours and trying to build houses and the person throughout his life is trying to worship that house. The only thing he is concerned about in his life is his house, his castle, his yard. And these are all the, all the concerns the person has in his life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam therefore is reminding us, Man kana lillah, kana allahu lahu. If you belong to Allah, then, ever, then Allah will become yours. And if you don't belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you belong to everything else in this life, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not yours. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al-Kareem, Huwa alladhi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardi jami'a. Whatever you see in this universe, He has created that for you. So if he has created all of these things for us, these things have to serve, serve us no matter what. Things in this world, they have to serve us no matter what. But the condition is, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we don't serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the purpose of our creation, then these things do not serve us either. And we start serving these things. Then we devote our lives serving just these things in our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from being the servants of these materials and make us the real servant of his. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ir al-muslimina wal-muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.